All right, let's kickstart today's program with a chat on the strategy you should employ when you're investing in equity. Now, a lot has happened in the recent past, uh, most of it related to geopolitical tensions, but that has caused turmoil in a lot of markets, not least of which the equity markets. You've also seen commodity prices globally rising, raising fears of inflation, and that in turn is expected to uh, result in a rise in global bond yields. Now, how should you position yourself in the near to medium term in terms of strategy? Let's bring on board Kartik Javeri, founder and director of Transcend Consulting India Private Limited. Thank you so much, Kartik, for taking the time. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Let's talk about value and growth, and then we can get into the details of how one can employ this, uh, at what time one should use either of these, and whether one can use a combination of the two. Let's start with growth first, because I think that's the kind of strategy that a lot of people have employed during the bull run that we've seen. How would you describe growth as a strategy? You know, um, Alex, uh, the truth be told, during the pandemic time, a lot of people, when the way they've got into the stock market is actually the basic assumption that the stocks are quoted, quoting at absolutely, uh, you know, historically low valuations, very, very mouthwatering valuations. So get into those stocks and then, you know, everybody makes money as a result of that. But so, so the growth wasn't really happening there. If at all, the growth was really going, uh, you know, downwards or sideways, right? But talking about growth, the subject that you mentioned, we are talking about companies here which are growing at a much faster pace than they grew before, number one. Number two, they are new companies and they are, because they are new and they are young, they are growing at a blistering pace because they have a new product or a new solution, which is pretty much capturing the market. And as a result of which, you know, the revenue growth that is the sales growth, your quarter on quarter could be as much as 30%, 40%, 50%. These companies immediately give you the benefit of increasing share prices. So if you are very closely and very uh, diligently, if you're monitoring quarterly numbers, you will see that the moment there's a jump in quarterly profits, eventually the stock price will also catch up. So that's basically what's happening with growth. When there is growth, automatically profits will follow. If the profits don't follow, then the stock gets hammered. But otherwise, if the growth is there intact, if profits are also fair, then growth keeps happening, stock price keeps moving up. Now, I just want to make one tiny point here. Sometimes you could have a company which is growing by 50%, but if the profit is not proportionately growing or if the profit has reduced, then that's a red flag. You may not want to consider that as a real growth company. Because growth only doesn't mean sales growth. It also means growth of net profit, which is the earnings per share. If people are monitoring uh, it a little more deeply, it also means a marginal increase in return equity. And return equity is either maintained or you know keeps going up. Okay, so you've explained very nicely, I think, Karthik, how growth works. Before we get into the value strategy, one would think that uh, you should also deal with the drawbacks associated with growth. While it is a well-established strategy, uh, are there any uh, drawbacks to going with this one approach? You know, the fundamental thing, now if you go by this doctrine of growth, perfect examples are, you know, these e-commerce websites and e-commerce ventures which have got recently listed. Their growth is phenomenal and that's why they keep getting uh, more and more rounds of funding by private equity investors and angel investors and so on and so forth. But are they making profit is the question. So what happens in a bad time when the tide turns around, these stocks get hammered completely and you know endlessly. Because look, what are we actually paying for as an, as an investor? I am paying for having a partnership share in the growth of that company. I'm being the owner of the company when I'm buying a stock. So if there is a stock which is only showing me sales at the cost of burning money and spending a lot of money, but if they are making no profit, then that's a red flag for me. And the moment the, you know, the interest of some of the people who are chasing it, maybe large broking houses, maybe somebody's exiting, there could be lots of strategies going on behind which ordinary people like you and me will never understand. So when that activity is over and it's happening right now as we speak, 
some of the darlings and some of the best known or touted as the best uh, business models look at the share prices they are absolutely down they are down more than 50% so think if you bought those companies at those valuations how much money erosion has happened and when will it come back is anybody's guess i can't say that for sure so that's the biggest negative growth at the cost of profit by sacrificing profit by sacrificing growth in eps all of that doesn't work out ultimately it's the old age wisdom that the gujaratis and marwadis of the world believed if you do business there has to be profit if there is no profit a very big question on the sanctity of that business model and that investment for the retail investor like you and me you should look for growth companies that have strong earnings and that i think was the traditional definition of the uh, theory also but let's yes. talk about value uh because this is something that is relatively harder to hit right because uh, the the strike rate when you're talking about uh, getting uh, a value strategy right uh, is not necessarily very very high but the payout can be significant how do you describe the value strategy you know very rarely this kind of a uh, uh, large payout will happen like you mentioned now what happens what is a value strategy fundamentally it's a low priced stock or a stock whose basic value let's say book value for example you know is say 10 rupees but with the current situation the book value is 3 rupees so you would call that this is like a deeply undervalued stock just by using this one parameter does this happen yes it happens for for a fact and it happens with many companies at many times you know assets are large profits have happened they have accumulated and from an accounting point of view book value is at 10 and the stock could be at a 3 or 4 uh, you know <clears throat> at the moment which means it's a great buy you see that's one of the ways of looking at it then price to earnings ratio if the industry i mean if the competitors of that company that the company is working in the industry or the sector that they are working in if the average is say 20 and if the company that you're looking at if that you know p ratio or price to earnings for that is about 5 then again you would say that that's an undervalued stock but a hard to define and b lot of times stocks are undervalued because they are maybe a utility company or they are just doing the same thing year after year because they are going to maintain their balance sheet but they are not going to have a huge growth in sales so the earnings will continue the dividend payouts will continue but capital appreciation will not happen so much it happens in many public sector companies also that we see that sometimes the valuation could be really really cheap but you know you would never really make money out of it it's not a wealth creator because that company is not interested in going and making new acquisitions or making inorganic growth or anything of that sort so there are lots of ifs and buts that happen with a value strategy uh, sometimes like you said the rewards work out you identify a gem and you know you feel that and the, you know the value strategy actually comes out in times of uh, you know depression in times of uh, a crash you know where where there is an exuberance of everything so when the markets have fallen sometimes even the good guys get beaten very badly right and in that sense when a good company you find at a very very low valuation then that's the time the value strategy will work but otherwise most of the time the market is in a trend it's in a broad trend i'm not talking of a short term trend but i'm talking of a medium to long term trend and the trend is normally upwards so in an upward trend it's so hard to find value sometimes but um, that said it's not a bad idea and one must look at some of these parameters so you know what price you are paying sometimes you don't want to pay an exorbitant price but sometimes you want to pay a reasonable price for somebody who is growing at that speed reasonable is is subjective isn't it Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> it is subjective. It depends on who is buying and uh, what they think when they're buying, for what horizon they're buying, all of those factors. But having said that, uh, to, let's talk about the current scenario, right? Where we are at right now. There's so much volatility. There's so much uncertainty. There are even uh, people that are suggesting that it is time to turn to a value strategy from what has been a growth-oriented strategy more often than not. Uh, what would you say in terms of how an investor here in india should approach things you know alex on literally an everyday basis we are continuously seeing the profiles of companies when i say profile means we are not reading balance sheet but we are looking at the numbers so we are looking at which company has been growing whether there is growth or not and what i have concluded is there is 
not one, not two, but there are dozens of companies and dozens of opportunities which are growing at a rapid pace, which are growing at 30%, 40%, quarter on quarter. So, I mean, quarter compared to the last year's quarter, you know, that's how I mean. So there is enough opportunity, there is enough growth. We are in a long-term bull market. What happens is after two years of the markets rising, we are falling right now. But this fall is not going to be like a global crash or a catastrophe, what happened two years ago or what happened in 2008. That kind of an event happens once in a decade or once in, say, about eight years' time. So 2020, it's happened. I do not see such a huge crash happening. These are corrections and corrections sometimes could be larger and corrections also can be in the range of about 20 to 30%. That's the historic average of the last 30 years of our markets. So therefore, I think we are still absolutely intact into the growth model. If that were not true, companies would not be growing. There are enough and more examples of phenomenal sales growth phenomenal profit growth and therefore that growth model is very much you know live and kicking at the moment if you go to value then you might actually miss out on the opportunities i mean look at what's happening in the sugar sector continuously there are announcements there are opportunities there are lots of things happening a sleepy sector a value oriented stack sector which is transforming itself into a growth sector infrastructure there is so much of supply and uh, demand imbalance in the global economics that is playing out. China plus one is playing out. There is so much happening. So yes, we've gone up 150%, Alex, we should come down by about 20, 30%. I think that just makes the whole market participation a lot more healthy. That's fine. Long-term investors are not worried because their profits are moving up and down. New investors go cautious, go step by step into this. But at the end of the day, everybody is going to make a lot of money. There's a lot of opportunity. And I think the growth strategy is very, very much intact. I don't think that's going anywhere. It's too soon. Okay. Uh, now, the last word, Karthik. Uh, in case, and there are a lot of uh, investors out there that are venturing into the stock market themselves, but a lot of investors that still go through the mutual fund route. And there are mutual funds, uh, mutual fund managers that have either a growth approach or a value approach. Uh, what right. would you say in terms of advice where people should know what the orientation of the AMC or the fund manager is? You know, I think people sometimes overanalyze the, uh, the details of investing into a mutual fund. So you go to a couple of mutual funds. You can choose, I mean, if you really understand the difference between value and growth, by all means do that. For all you know, in about a year or two years time, the fund manager itself would have moved on to another uh, you know, company and you know that strategy sort of goes under a transformation of sorts. So my sense is don't do too much. What is important for a new investor is invest regularly, keep your nerves, don't uh, you know listen to all the noise and get uh, you know get nervous, get panicked, don't press the sell button, especially in a falling market. Please understand, 20, 30% is a normal, you know, nature of the market. That's how the market moves. So invest your money, keep it there, regularly do it. If you see that somebody has consistently not performed over the next two years or three years, maybe you want to exit. But even if you are looking at the general portals which are available, the comparative analysis that you get on a, if you look at the consistency of a fund on a three or five year, seven year, 10 year basis, let them decide what strategy they want to have. Let them decide their investment model. Let them decide what they want. Ultimately, you're interested in whether they make money for you. If you are making a 15% compounded return over a 15 to 20 or 25 year period through your working life, I don't think there is anything to worry about. Let the professionals do their job. You focus on your skills and try and earn more and invest more. No, thank you so much, Kartik, for joining in, for taking the time. Always a pleasure. Well, thank you. Bye.